In the mid-20th century, as the Cold War was taking shape, the need for a formidable main battle tank became increasingly apparent. Among the various armored vehicles that emerged during this period, the British Chieftain tank garnered particular attention. Renowned for its firepower and protective capabilities, the Chieftain represented a significant leap forward in the evolution of tank design. The journey of the Chieftain began in the late 1950s when the British Army recognized a need to replace the Centurion tank, which had served admirably since the end of World War II. At that time, advancements in tank technology were accelerating and the British military sought to develop a tank that could not only keep pace with potential adversaries, but also surpass them. The result of this ambition was the Chieftain, which, upon its introduction in the 1960s, was considered one of the most powerful and sophisticated tanks in existence. One of the standout features of the Chieftain was its main armament, the L11A5 120mm rifled gun. This gun was not only larger than its predecessors, but also boasted exceptional accuracy and range. The rifling of the barrel allowed for improved precision, a crucial factor in engaging enemy armor effectively. The Chieftain's gun was complemented by advanced fire control systems, which enhanced its ability to hit targets accurately at longer distances. This combination of firepower and technology made the Chieftain a formidable opponent on the battlefield. The Chieftain's design also prioritized crew protection. The tank's armor was among the thickest of its time, featuring a composite construction that provided substantial resistance against enemy fire. The sloped armor further increased its defensive capabilities, allowing it to deflect incoming rounds more effectively. With its reinforced turret and hull, the Chieftain was built to withstand direct hits from enemy tanks, a testament to its role as a frontline combatant in the event of a conflict. Under the hood, the Chieftain was powered by a Leyland L60 multi-fuel engine. This engine was designed to be versatile, capable of running on a variety of fuels, which was a strategic advantage during extended military campaigns. However, it's worth noting that the L60 engine had its share of challenges. It was known for being somewhat unreliable and maintenance intensive, which occasionally hampered the Chieftain's operational readiness. Despite these issues, the engine provided the necessary power to propel the Chieftain's considerable mass, giving it a top speed of around 30 miles per hour on road surfaces. The crew configuration in the Chieftain was typical for main battle tanks of the era, consisting of a commander, gunner, loader, and driver. The interior layout was designed to maximize efficiency and communication among the crew members. The commander's cupola offered excellent visibility allowing for effective situational awareness on the battlefield. Additionally, the tank was equipped with night vision equipment, enabling operations in low light conditions, a significant tactical advantage. Throughout its service life, the Chieftain underwent numerous upgrades and modifications to keep it relevant in the ever-evolving landscape of armored warfare. These upgrades included improvements to its fire control systems, armor enhancements, and adaptations to its engine to address reliability issues. The various marks of the Chieftain, from the Mark I through to the later Mark X and Mark XI, each represented iterative improvements based on battlefield experience and technological advancements. One of the notable aspects of the Chieftain's service was its export to other countries. While the British Army was the primary operator, several other nations also adopted the Chieftain tailoring it to their specific needs and operational doctrines. For instance, the Iranian military became one of the largest foreign operators of the Chieftain, acquiring a significant number of units in the 1970s. Iran's Chieftains saw considerable action during the Iran-Iraq War, underscoring the tank's ability to endure and perform in harsh combat conditions. The Chieftain also played a vital role in the development of future British armored vehicles. Its design principles and operational lessons influenced the subsequent Challenger 1 and Challenger 2 tanks. These successors built upon the Chieftain's strengths, further advancing British tank technology and maintaining the United Kingdom's reputation for producing world-class armored vehicles. Despite its many strengths, the Chieftain was not without its detractors. 
Critics often pointed to its engine issues as a significant drawback, a factor that sometimes overshadowed its impressive combat capabilities. Additionally, the evolution of anti-tank weaponry and new armor technologies in the later years of the Cold War era meant that the chieftain had to contend with increasingly sophisticated threats. However, through continuous upgrades and modernizations, it remained a potent force on the battlefield until it was eventually phased out in favor of more modern designs. In retrospect, the Chieftain Tank stands as a symbol of British engineering prowess during a pivotal time in military history. It represented not only a technological leap in tank design, but also a strategic asset in the broader context of Cold War defense. Its legacy is preserved in the annals of military history and continues to be studied by military historians and enthusiasts alike. As we delve into the details of the Chieftain's service and capabilities, it becomes clear that this tank was more than just a machine of war. It was a testament to the ingenuity and determination of its designers and operators. The Chieftain's story is one of adaptation and resilience, a narrative that echoes the broader tale of armored warfare in the 20th century.